Hare Krishna everyone, so we are back with Light of the Bhagavatam by His Divine Grace, Srila AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And this is Shravanam Diaries Podcast. I'm your host Sulalita Devidasi and let's dive in. Text number 34. Small pools of water accumulate during the rainy season and In the autumn they gradually dry up. The little creatures playing in those small pools do not understand that their days are now numbered and will end very soon. Thus they are like foolish men who do not care for the nearing day of their death, but become absorbed in the so-called enjoyment of family life. Poor part. Foolish politicians are too attached to family life. A big politician means a big family man. An ordinary family man is attached to his limited family of wife and children. But big politicians extend the same family feeling to a wider circle and thus become encumbered by false prestige, honor, and self-interest. The politician never retires from politics, even if he has enjoyed many comfortable posts, like that of minister or president. The older he is, the more he is attached to his false prestige. Even at the fag end of his life, he thinks that everything will be spoiled without him. He is so foolish that he does not see that many other politicians who thought like him have come and gone, with no gain or loss for want of them. These family men, big and small, are like the small fish in the pools of water that gradually dry up in the autumn. They are foolish because they think that their attachment to their family, even at the end of their lives, will be able to protect them from the cruel hands of death. As already mentioned, the human life must be divided into four component parts. The student life, the householder life, the preparative life, and the life of dedication to the service of the Lord. One must retire from all sorts of family life, big or small, at the age of 50, and thus prepare for the next life. That is the process of human culture. The householders are allowed a pension, pension from service, so that they can live for a higher cultural life. But foolish men, reluctant even to accept this pension, want to artificially increase the duration of their life. Such foolish men should take lessons from the drying pools of water and should know in their own interests that life is eternal, continuing even after death. Only the body changes, whether spiritually or materially. An intelligent man should be careful to know what sort of body is going to be awarded to him. And thus he must prepare for a better life in other planets, even if he is reluctant to go back to Godhead. Text 35 When the small pools of water become too hot because of the scorching heat of the autumn sun, the poor small creatures with their many family members suffer terribly, as poor householders with too many family members suffer economic strains and yet go on begetting children because of 
uncontrolled senses. Purport. Human life is meant for controlling the senses. For uncontrolled senses are the cause of material bondage. But for fools, sense enjoyment is the pivot of life's activities. <laughs> pivot of life's activities. All men undergo hard laborious duties all day and night and in all seasons of the year only for the sake of sense pleasure with their mates these foolish creatures have no information of other enjoyment in a godless civilization especially sense pleasure accepted in the name of culture and philosophy is all in all men who are addicted to this pleasure are called Kripanas. When the Kripanas have too many children, they suffer the scorching heat of family life. And then similar leaders advise them to undertake family planning. The idea of this family planning is that sense pleasure should not be curtailed but birth control should be accomplished by artificial measures. Such methods of birth control are called bruna hatya or killing the child in embryo. Such killing is a sinful act and in the revealed scriptures a specific hell is designated for those who commit such sins. Spiritual culture means pursuing a better engagement in life. When a man engages in such cultural life, the desire for mating automatically abates, and the sufferings of uncontrolled family life are mitigated without artificial means. The attention of a human being, therefore, should be drawn to the cultivation of the human spirit, for this will gradually protect him from all sorts of discomfiture and elevate him to a higher status of life. For real and eternal enjoyment in personal contact with the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Text number 36 With the progress of the autumn season, the moist earth and muddy places begin to dry up, and the green vegetation begins to fade. This drying up and fading resembles the gradual disappearance of the false sense of affinity and ego. Purport Progress in cultivating the human spirit entails the gradual disappearance of the materialistic ego, covered by ignorance, passion and so-called goodness. The spirit soul thinks himself all in all and is covered by a false sense of ego. Thus he falsely identifies the soul with the body and his bodily relations with material things become the objects of his attraction. This false identification and attraction for matter gradually dry up and fade away by success in the cultivation of human spirit. This is the effect of such higher cultivation. Progress in spiritual culture brings about the disintegration of false ego and material attraction. The ultimate, ultimate, the ultimate goal of cultivating the human spirit is God-realization and surrender unto God with a full sense of His all-pervasive nature. When a liberated soul 
thus surrenders unto the lotus feet of the all-pervading Godhead, the ocean of nations becomes as insignificant to him as the water in the small hoofprint of a calf. He at once becomes eligible to be promoted to the spiritual kingdom. And he has nothing to do with this miserable land of the material world. Cultivation of the human spirit is not, therefore, mere adjustment of materialistic anomalies. It is the process for preparing oneself to be promoted to the spiritual kingdom. No one can adjust the sufferings of material existence. But by spiritual culture, one can elevate himself from the effects of such miserable life. As an example, one may cite the condition of a dry coconut. The dry coconut pulp automatically becomes separate from its outer skin. Similarly, the outer skin, or the gross and subtle material coverings of the soul, automatically separates from the spirit soul. And the spirit soul can then exist in spiritual existence, even though apparently within the dry skin. This freedom from the sense, false sense of ego, is called the liberation of the soul. Haribo, I really love this example. I really love this example. The dry coconut pulp becoming separate from the outer skin, meaning we have our gross and subtle material coverings, but inside, inside that active life of spiritual existence is just making us unaffected by the external material, the effects of the external, external material life. So this is the freedom from the false sense of ego and this is the liberation of the soul. Jai, so thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description as well as links for the illustrations for each and every text. And we shall see you next time. Hare Krishna.